Hello, Kent. How you doing? Uh, <clears throat> one of the few things that I've learned and is really important uh, to understand is that <clears throat> there's a freebie that happens uh, when you have a magnet close to a piece of iron. What happens is the magnet has two pressure zones, uh, like a north part and a south part. And if you were able to visualize it, you would visualize tornadoes. One going in one direction, one going in the other direction. When the magnet was made, it was pumped up with a lot of current, electrical current. And that made all the atoms line up. So now you have two inertias, one going one way, one going another, and it remained like that. It solidified that way. So all this energy from around us, which is electromagnetic energy, we live in an electromagnetic world, gets spun around through the midpoint of the magnet and gets tossed out. So a magnet, what a magnet is doing is organizing this disorganization, this electromagnetic energy that's all over. Uh, which results in nothing because it's disorganized, but the magnet organizes it into two poles, the North Pole, South Pole, and it organizes into two distinct pressure zones. And the, the amazing thing about it is it's, it's not normal. Uh, nature is not like that in the normal sense. It doesn't like to have pressure zones. So what happens when you bring an iron bar close to a magnet that has two poles, automatically the magnet wants to dissipate its energy. And anytime you put an iron close to it, the magnet magnetism will jump into the iron bar. And not only does it want to jump into the iron bar, it wants to cancel itself out. So let's say that you, your magnet is here with the North Pole on top, South Pole on here. So you bring this iron bar close to it and it'll create a magnetic loop automatically. You do not need to put energy into it. Just by bringing the iron bar close, you, you form a magnetic loop. The North going into the South, South going into the North. And you did nothing except bring the iron bar close. Now, let's say that this iron bar had coils around it. Well, when you do that, and you have this, uh, it's called magnetic flux, the stream, current, imagine it, if you will, if it was a current of water. So you got a pump up here, the North Pole, let's say it's a pump, and over here, down on the bottom, you have another pump, but it's a suction pump. So, automatic, when you put a conduit, Let's say this is the conduit, the metal iron bar. It'll, it'll suck into the iron bar and it will go right into the south pole. Automatically, again, without you putting any energy in. What happens is if this, this iron bar had coils around it, it would produce an electrical current, electrical energy. That is what you can harvest for free. Absolutely for free. It's there, it's for you to take. And you could do this approaching of the iron bar over and over and over again and it will constantly make electrical energy every time you bring this iron bar close to the magnet. It will do that automatically. You do not need to do or put any energy into it. It does it at the speed of light and it's free. So people are looking for free energy there it is the problem with with uh, the invention of 1829 and we're going to go through that is that <clears throat> uh, they have like two coils uh, look if you look at the photo two big coils and a horseshoe magnet that is spun around so that the poles interchange every 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 time you spin it it cha it changes according to faraday every time there's a change in magnetic flux a change 
it doesn't say how much power you need it just says a change you will produce an electrical current that's verbatim that's Faraday's law anytime there's a change in the magnetic flux so every time you turn the horseshoe magnet back and forth you're going to create electrical energy okay so what is the problem with that why don't we just continue getting free energy for forever the problem in the today's generators is they took that idea of the coils and they put it in a circular fashion so instead of like two little coils now they'd have eight maybe sixteen but what happens is, is this is just a, a, a side effect anytime you have an iron core with coils around it and it starts a current in there that's what happens when you approach a magnet you're, you're also creating something else besides electrical energy you're producing an electromagnet anytime you get a current going through a wire like this in, in this circular fashion that that core that iron core becomes a magnet itself it will become the same polarity as as the as the magnet that's coming in so in other words the north that's approaching the top will be north the south that's approaching the bottom will be south so these magnets wants to up, up they oppose each other that is what people call lens law is there a way around it yes you don't put them like this you put the coil like this so that there's no opposing forces that is a, the, in, a, in a nutshell my invention you don't you don't need to do this people have always thought you need to bring the magnet over the core to get this uh, energy to work you don't need to remember magnetism will go through to the iron regardless of which way your iron is pointed it will it will penetrate into the core that is the key to the insight that I have you don't need to put an electromagnet against a magnet which is kinda what we're doing in today's generation uh, electrical generation we are we are facing uh, we are facing a permanent magnet against an electromagnet and and we do that many times multiple times so um, I, I will show you in a diagram what happens uh, and why why this why this affects the, the generation why why generators get so hard to turn and they'll tell you and they'll tell you this oh it's because you're turning you're turning um, muscle you're turning um, kinetic energy into electrical power they'll tell you that and they want you to believe that that all you're doing is is, is taking energy mechanical energy and converting it to electrical energy well, I'm going to tell you that's bogus it's not true the the energy that it takes to to turn the 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 generator the opposing mechanism that you have going on is what creates the resistance anytime you have a magnet approaching a, a, a same polarity there's gonna be resistance and that's exactly what you're doing inside a generator you're creating a, a you have magnets surrounding electromagnets and I'll go into detail on that so you can understand what's going on what the problem is and how we can solve it okay so that's coming up next